Hello, uh, my name is Hiroshi Nakamura, and my short name is Nahi at Twitter and GitHub, and I'm working at Aperio and doing CRB and JRB development at my off time. And I'm a member of asaksa.lv. Uh, we are having a weekly meetup, and so when you came to when you come to Tokyo, Japan, please join us. You can contact uh, from here. Today, I'll introduce the matrix I created. The, that shows the advantages and disadvantages of uh, comparison of Ruby's HTTP client libraries. You can see the whole matrix from this URL. And please take care uh, to refer this matrix because I'm the author of one of those HTTP clients, HTTP client. This is agenda. Uh, at first, I'll provide a brief introduction to net HTTP internal, and I show 16 Ruby HTTP client libraries I picked and explain the matrix in detail. API style, compatibility, and supported features. And I also provide a performance comparisons. And uh, at the last, I'll show you my recommendations of Ruby HTTP client for purposes. This is the class diagram of net HTTP. Uh, it has a HTTP class that represents the connection to a server. And it has HTTP request that's representing request and the HTTP response for the response too. There are lots of derived classes of request and response, but these three classes implement the all of net HTTP features. Do you know net, what net HTTP proxy is? It was a class, but it's now the method that returns the crafted HTTP object that utilizes the proxy connection. And it also has net HTTPS library, but all that all it does is require net HTTP and require open SSL. It's, it locates uh, only for backward compatibility now. And this simplicity of class and complexity of implementation causes, uh, uh, is the root cause of why developers want to write their own Ruby HTTP client library, I guess. Here's 16 uh, HTTP client li libraries I picked. Uh, there has four groups. The first group of green is original implementation. It uh, net HTTP is a standard library, as I said, and EXCon and HTTP client are the pure Ruby implementation. And EMHTTP request is an event machine based original implementation. The second group is net HTTP wrappers. OpenURI is also a standard library of Ruby and HTTP party, Metanize, Roofs Verbs, REST Client, and REST Free. The third one is uh, CURL wrappers. There's CURV and Patron. And the last one of LED is uh, adapter based implementation that uh, offers developers to choose the backend HTTP engine. And it, uh, there are REST and WERI and Faraday and HTTPI. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, there are uh, many HTTP client libraries. I didn't evaluate uh, and these are the HTTP client libraries I cannot evaluate because active resource of Rails uh, is Rails to Rails specific, 
and HTTP is under development, and HTTP request.rv, uh, it, its test doesn't pass, and also Net, Nestful has no test, <laughs> and Typhus uh, is one of the CURV wrapper, and it's under heavy rewriting now, so I cannot evaluate this uh, HTTP client. And these, uh, uh, I didn't evaluate because uh, these, uh, these gems uh, aren't updated recently, so I think those libraries are obsolete. Evaluation access, project stats, and API style, compatibility, supported features, connection features, basic HTTP features, and so on. And I created a test unit script for, the, for checking these supported features. So you can, if you want, you can try the test from this URL. And this script shows uh, you uh, how you can use the, uh, the specific feature uh, like uh, posing merge platform and base goals and proxy authentication. Uh, you can see th these tests as the example. First, I start from project start. These are the these are sixteen libraries I evaluated, and here is the maintainer and. Uh, are there anyone in this room? I think, yeah, Eric is, okay. Uh, and I, I'm the author of HTTP client, <laughs> and Eric is the uh, maintainer of Metronize. And we restate the REST client and REST are not updated this year 2000, from 2011. So you may need to find a uh, latest development folk from GitHub if you want to use this library. And these are stats at GitHub and RubyGems. There are four libraries, HD Party, Mechanized REST Client, and Faraday. Those has thousands of GitHub stars and hundreds of GitHub folks and Million of downloads. Next is API style. I summarize the API style to synchronous and asynchronous and parallel. And all of uh, HTTP client libraries have synchronous API. I introduce the, all of the API style. And first, it's the synchronous API that utilizes the client instance. With these gems, developer need to instantiate the client from the provided class, and developer can issue the HTTP request from the created instance. The next one is client class. With these client, with these libraries, uh, user developer uh, in user issues uh, HTTP request form as the class method. But in the inside, the class method instances the internal in client instance, so there's nothing different from the previous API style. The third one is resource. With these API uh, uh, libraries, <laughs> Uh, developer uh, instances the resource with URL, then developer can issue a request as the instance method of the created resource without passing the whole URL every time. The fourth one is include. With these libraries, uh, developer can create their own customized uh, HTTP client class like this, and use use the uh, utility methods and features from inside of the uh, customized class. 
The last one, others, OpenUI offers like this API. And REST is uh, interesting, a little bit funny <laughs> API like this. It starts with the URL storing and converts to URI. Then uh, user can issue the HTTP request as the instance method of the URI object. Next is a synchronous one. The first one is callback. EM HTTP request with HTTP request, developer instances the request, but the request not issued at this time, and developer defines the callback for successful request and erroneous request. Then uh, event machines, main thread issues the uh, HTTP request, and when request finished, it uh, invokes the either of this callback. So developer needs to uh, implement their uh, uh, logics with this callback style. The next one is polling. With this API, uh, client uh, library offers uh, a synchronous API. It, this is a sample from HTTP client. Uh, it uh, developer issues this asynchronous API instead of synchronous one, and it returns the connection object. Uh, developer can pull it if it's the it, if it requests the it request finished or not. And when uh, connection is finished, developer can read the response from the connection object. The last one is Parallel API. CURB has a Parallel uh, API that issues the request, all of the requests in simultaneously. Uh, there are multi uh, object and developer can add the uh, HTTP request to multiple of multi object and the uh, request uh, are issued at this perform method invocation. So the, uh, some uh, libraries has a synchronous API and CURB has a parallel API. For multi threading, almost all support multi threading, so developers don't need to care about the thread, but net, net HTTP and Python need a uh, developer to instantiate the object path thread, so you need to care uh, this multi thread environment. Error handling almost all raises exceptions when error happens, but with, uh, for REST free, uh, developer can configure to return error object instead of raising exception. EMHTTP request requires the error callback as I shown you before. The next is compatibility. Uh, all of the libraries uh, runs fine on CRB, of course, and uh, except uh, CURL extension runs fine on JRB as well. Uh, JRB has CX support, experimental CX support, but I mark uh, this no because I think it's experimental and I guess it won't be exit from experimental status. So if you want to use your application uh, uh, as well as JRB, you should use uh, other HTTP client. And for Rubinius, uh, Patron fails uh, running my test, but I think it should work and it should be fixed easily. I think there's something bug in Patron or uh, Rubinius, I don't know. Connection features. Uh, in HTTP, there are uh, three connection types. I explain it first. 
Uh, first one is no keep alive connection. No, with no keep alive connection, client and server create the socket for each HTTP request. And with keep alive connection, client and server can use the same connection uh, for multiple requests. So it's a little bit efficient for not, not needed, needing uh, socket creation and socket destruction. And for pipelining, uh, client don't need to wait the response comes before uh, issuing the next request. And as you see this, uh, it's very efficient uh, in contrast to keep alive connections. But I think this pipelining uh, processing is difficult. So and many uh, web servers like Apache doesn't support this pipelining uh, request. So when you want to use uh, pipelining from your uh, HTTP client, you should take care if the server supports pipelining or not. So, and the keep alive is supported on mechanized and EM HTTP request, HTTP client, CURB, Petron, and Faraday. And pipelining is supported on EMHTTP request and CURB. I show you the keep alive in EMHTTP request. <laughs> for, for keep alive connection, uh, you need to wait the first response comes before sending the second request. So the second request must uh, issued from the first callback, third request from second callback. So <laughs> you need to write this kind of code. So I think you don't want to use it. In contrast to it, yeah, pipelining is fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, in pipelining, uh, client don't need to wait the next request issuing. So the client can issue like this. And when the error happened, just handle the error at here. So I think it's feasible. I mean, uh, keep alive in EMHTTP request. It's not feasible for general development. Next is SSL. I need water. This red cell uh, is, means there's no verification by default. Yeah, no, yes, no verification by default. This is accepted from a, a client library. It uh, sets uh, if the uh, if it's trying to connect the SSL server, it sets verification mode to none. That doesn't do verification. And if options are set, it turns on verify peer to do verification. So the developer can configure to do SSL verification for these libraries, but if developer makes a bug about uh, options handling and the options is cleared, uh, this HTTP library sets verify none and send uh, and connect to the SSL server and send users data and secret thing without warning. It, it's not what SSL is expected. If uh, SSL verification is not done, and developer want to verify, it should stop sending data. So uh, when you want to uh, connect to the server, uh, you should use Metanize or HTTP client that supports uh, certification revocation too, and CURB or REST and HTTPI. Proxy. Uh, almost all support proxy and proxy authentication and basic authentication to the server and some supports 
Digest authentication and Windows MTLM authentication too. HTTP features. Almost all supports get post, put, delete, and open URI doesn't support uh, post and put delete because it's just for downloading a file. And some library supports custom uh, HTTP method like purge. It's not a good thing, but some API uh, server requires you send the, this kind of not non-standard HTTP request. So if you are connecting to such kind of service, you should use this kind of HTTP library. IRI. IRI is an internationalized resource identifier that uh, includes the multibyte in URL. Unfortunately, URI RV doesn't support IRI. And uh, addressable gem supports IRI, but also, unfortunately, addressable URI is not aimed to be a drop-in replacement of URL.rv. So, uh, HTTP client library developers need some code to support addressable URI. It's not difficult, so you can ask these library developers to support addressable URI. Response headers. Uh, CRV returns response headers in a single string, so if you want to uh, extract the information from HTTP headers, uh, you need to pass by yourself. And cookie. Uh, Metronize and HTTP client supports cookie, but uh, HTTP client has cross-site cooking bug. Uh, HTTP client eats this cookie for .com site uh, and sends it to all .com site. It's not expected because it can cause a security vulnerability like session fixation. So, and the browsers need to handle this kind of domain. And what kind of domain name can uh, store a cookie and send a cookie? So, uh, if you all need uh, this uh, cookie handling properly, uh, you should. You must use Metanize. Metanize handles these uh, cookies properly, like browsers. Redirect. Uh, HTTP server could return a redirect response that uh, to inform clients to follow the redirection. And uh, many uh, client libraries support the redirection following, but some. Uh, HTTP client library doesn't uh, have a redirect limit. So if the server uh, returns the same redirection again and again, it calls an infinite loop and clashes your Ruby interpreter. You, you should uh, take care of the, this redirection limit if you are going to use this client libraries. Form URL encoded is uh, with these supported libraries, you can pass a uh, query, HTTP query, and uh, the post form in a hash or array. Without this feature, uh, you need to concatenate the parameters with ampersand and equal by yourself. <coughs> so, sorry. Uh, Multiple post. Uh, this library supports a uh, multi-part uh, file post for posting and streaming, upload, and download. Uh, this is a sample from the patrons, patron, and patron has a parameter file to specify the file to upload to server, and patron uh, reads the file in chunk and send it to the server, and then next read the next chunk from file. 
without uh, consuming all of, uh, without reading all of the file and consume lots of memory. And also for download, the, uh, <coughs> sorry, Adrian has get file method and, and uh, pass to write parameters to f write a file into the specified file and without uh, reading all of the response in memory. If EMHTP request also has such method and uh, for change to download, uh, EMHTP request offers a stream callback that's yielded uh, every chunk read from the server. Compression, uh, lots of uh, HTTP client library supports uh, compression and decompression. And, and also for response data set, some libraries set the response encoding of the response string uh, uh, according to the HTTP response header uh, content type and chat set. So you don't need to set your, uh, you don't need to set, you don't need to combat uh, uh, encoding by yourself. Development support. Uh, response subbing uh, is uh, subbing a response. It's the sample from HTTP client. It has the rookback response method and can cache the HTTP response body. And when you invoke the next request, the, this uh, string uh, returned from uh, the method without accessing the actual service. And HTTP client also has an HTTP message uh, stabbing and this is an uh, example for redirecting from to, uh, redirecting to another URL and the response, uh, normal response. And when uh, this method is invoked, this follows this re redirect and gets this um, uh, HTTP response and without accessing this server. Some library has the similar uh, feature and it helps to debug or test your client. But uh, I'll show, I'll introduce later, but you can use the web mock gem for those not supporting uh, libraries. So uh, it, yeah, you may uh, not take care of this line by using web mock gem. I will introduce it later. Uh, some library has wire dump debug feature. Uh, it allows you to dump the actual HTTP request string and response string to or writing to the file. And it helps uh, debugging, such as uh, HTTP server seems to return a broken response or a wrong HTTP response header it helps you to debug such kind of uh, blocking responses. I really like shell. Sam has this feature. Uh, I, think, I think REST clients is the first client that offers this feature. And with these libraries, you can invoke the I really like shell and invoke the methods inside from it. And, and you can, also, of course, use the uh, IRB's uh, history editing feature. REST client also has an interesting and useful uh, feature and re replayable log. If you set this environment variable and, and call uh, REST client method, it dumps to the file in the format of the Ruby program. So you can uh, take this uh, code to your program uh, and uh, after uh, uh, trying to connect to the server, 
like this. It's a nice feature. I want to implement for HTTP client, client soon. The last advanced features. Uh, some libraries has request and response hook uh, that hooks the request just before sending to the server and just uh, after receiving response and before the passing the response. Uh, it's useful for uh, setting header like authentication header or uh, tweaking the HTTP response uh, from the server, uh, uh, fixing the chassis header or something. And uh, some libraries has JSON and XML convert feature. Uh, it converts the hash of an array into JSON or XML uh, before sending and converts it back to hash object from the response JSON or XML payload. Response caching is uh, mechanized and rest free, rust verbs and rest the features. Uh, it uh, caches the server's response, of course, in proper manner, and uh, it uh, mechanize uh, send uh, the server the request if check if the uh, resource is updated or not, for uh, if the resource is already downloaded, and it, it's uh, very efficient for uh, network uh, bandwidth usage, but it's uh, very nice for uh, browser-like client, but I mark this yellow is, the reason why I mark this yellow is uh, for API, API client, it might cause some problem because API server may not want to uh, get uh, if modified things or update check request. So uh, for API client, you should uh, be care because this feature is enabled by default for Mechanize. Is it right, Eric? Yeah. For HTML form handling, uh, um, a it's uh, shiny methods, shiny features of HT, uh, sorry, Mechanize. Uh, it allows to get the login form and uh, login page and get login form from it, set email and password, and send uh, proper URL to send the form. So it's very useful for testing your uh, web application. Testing client, uh, as I said before, WebMock supports the uh, WebMock is the library for stabbing and setting expectations on HTTP request. So, uh, and WebMock supports the, all of the library I listed, 16 all libraries. So, uh, you can use WebMock even if the HTTP client library has such features. And VCL is uh, for recording your test suite HTTP interactions and replay them during feature test with help from WebMark. So these uh, libraries uh, would be a mass for you to develop your HTTP client. Performance comparisons. Uh, this is uh, my uh, environment for evaluation uh, surveys at West Coast. Uh, Ubuntu and Apache 2.2, and the client is on East Coast, and I use Shield 1.9.3, and I did a multiple downloads of 200 bytes and 24 megabytes, but please don't take it serious because it's not comprehensive <laughs> benchmark. Uh, so if you want to use, uh, evaluate by yourself, you can uh, grab my benchmark script from here. This is a multiple 200 byte downloads. Please see the blue one first. The blue one is 
30 times download by one thread. Uh, there's a three groups. The one is um, doesn't support keep alive connection. The second supports keep alive connection. And the third, uh, yeah, the, the, so the keep, uh, when the library supports keep alive connection, it's uh, really efficient for small file downloads, as you see. And the third one is EM HTTP request and she will be multi. And because the other libraries um, issue the 30, time, uh, 30 HTTP request uh, one by one, but EM HTTP request and she will be multi issues the 30 request at once. So it's really fast, as you see. And the next is red one is with 10 threads and five times download for each thread. It's almost the same trend, but uh, thread is efficient for all HTTP libraries, except EM HTTP request and CURB. As I explained, those, uh, those libraries issued uh, request at once, so thread doesn't affect, doesn't have any uh, effect. The next one is uh, comparison of uh, Ruby implementations. The blue one is the one uh, I explained in the previous page, and red is the JRuby 1.7.0, and uh, yellow is uh, Rubinius 2.0.0 dev. You can see uh, almost the same trend for Shelby and Jerby and Rubinius, but for some libraries, rest free and wary, Jerby and Rubinius runs much slower than others and than Shelby and others. So I think there's something problem in perhaps Jerby and Rubinius about IO handling, but I'm not sure. And, and one most interesting thing is uh, event machine-based EM HTTP request. CDB is fast, but for JRuby and Rubinius, it's not fast. As you see, like it's almost the same as HTTP client and mechanized for Rubinius. And I'm, I also think there's something problem in JRuby and Rubinius of handling event machine. And as you see, event machine is not updated frequently, so it may take some time to fix this problem. The last graph is multiple 24 megabyte downloads. The blue one is the three times, live, three times download by one thread. And uh, you'll see almost the same trend for non-keep alive HTTP client and keep alive supported HTTP client. And for the 24 megabyte download, EM HTTP request and CRB multi is not so faster than others. So I think uh, this, uh, it's almost the network uh, throughput issue. So uh, keep alive supported HTTP clients can run faster uh, as fast as EM HTTP request and she will be multi for a big data download. And the next one is the red uh, with three threads and one time download for each. As you know, this, uh, that's almost, uh, you, you cannot see uh, notable differences from the result. So as I said before, uh, it's almost the network uh, throughput that uh, affects this uh, download time. It's the last slide. No, oh, I talk five minutes faster than practice. Uh, my recommendations, uh, if speed is the king, uh, you should use 
uh, EM HTTP request, and she will be with multi API. If but 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 if uh, you are going to download the big file, uh, uh, you can use other HTTP client libraries to avoid to fight with complex API of these HTTP client library. For HTML operation and cookies, you should use Metronize. And for API client, you should use, you can use uh, Faraday and other adapter-based implementations. But if you want to connect to SSL server, you need to care SSL server verification issue I explained in this, in this talk. And for SSL and various connectivity, uh, you can check HTTP client first. Uh, if you don't know uh, what server you are going to connect at the development time, you can uh, choose HTTP client for various connection features. Please check the matrix before, but uh, yeah, anyway, uh, please check the matrix before you use the libraries, and please let me know when you find incorrect cells in it. Thank you. We have four, we have four minutes of rest, and I can, a, a, any question? How long did it take you to assimilate all your data? <laughs> <laughs> I, I once create, created this uh, matrix uh, one and a half years ago for Japanese conference. It took three months. And this time, I just updated the matrix and removed some HTTP client, add some HTTP client. I take almost four weeks. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey. Hey. Um, you, you recommended which libraries to use here mm -hmm. based on what you uh, learned. Would you also make any recommendations to developing with libraries uh, that exist or developing a new library? You know, would you say to you should have done this differently. This feature is missing. This API is not good. So, so, sorry, I didn't understand the question. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. Oh, so based on you recommended which libraries? Yes. Would you make recommendations to the design of libraries? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the authors. Recommendations for the authors. Yeah. Uh, The feature I, write, I wrote uh, in this slides, uh, something uh, difficult to implement because lots of servers implement uh, specs improperly. So you need to take care of the uh, non-standard HTTP response. And, but uh, even though you want to write HTTP client by yourself, you can uh, first uh, define the API because I, I think oh. you should, yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, provide some recommendation for HTTP client developer authors because uh, there's a lot of HTTP client and uh, the oh, there's uh, ah, some had the same API that offers the client instance and get method with uh, how you can specify the query and how you specify the file, how you specify the body. And, and the web mock gem depends on such interface. 
So I think you should uh, define the API according to the existing one and try to implement your uh, internal implementation by yourself. Is it <laughs> oh, uh, rec uh, uh, recommendations for implement uh, sample implementation from HTTP developers? Uh, sorry. Um, well, if there's two, uh, you, you can either answer what could you have done better with that HTTP, for example, mm -hmm. in the core library, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, should we scrap it, return it, and put in something else? You know, the, the, the question is, mm -hmm. um, how should a good library be written? Yeah. Like what's, what's, a good, what's a good API? How, make it easy to use. Make it easy to ah. keep the standards. What features should it have? What, what did you learn was missing ah. or wrong? For the, uh, the question is uh, what I learned from various HTTP client APIs uh, API style, it's, is it, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I found some uh, not uh, easier to use interface, but, hmm, <laughs> what I find? Sorry, but uh, all I found is it's not good for uh, uh, it's uh, not good for uh, easy to use. But and I just found it's not easy to use like this uh, by including the uh, class method in, instead of instance method. So uh, uh, we uh, I think. Uh, developers should care uh, not the API itself, but uh, if it supports the threading or passing parameters to uh, how a uh, developer can uh, pass the parameters to the client instance, that's, uh, that's what I found from the learning of the various API clients. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's time. <laughs>